In order to correctly use our target tracking and enable us to focus follows target accurately, we need to calibrate our focus axis. At the moment, our focus axis is merely displaying a number at the top that is due to the scale factor involved, which happens to be that at the moment. That number means nothing, but will be used to create the correct scaling factor. In order to set up this lens, I'm going to go to Lens Setup and choose an empty lens. This screen shows the main things that need to be set up in order to calibrate this lens to work on this camera with that motor. I'm going to look first of all at this box that says Customize Focus. Customize Focus uses the information in a library file here to write a focus axis when a given lens is loaded. At the moment, this information is garbage, so customized focus is unchecked so that the garbage in here is not written onto the focus axis. I'm going to, first of all, give the lens a name. And the lens name I'm giving it is Ari Ultra Prime 50mm because that is the lens that I have mounted on the camera. The focal length of that lens is 50 millimeters. Because this is a good lens, I know that that is likely to be true. Some poorer lenses may say they are 50 millimeters, but they may well be 49 or 51 or some other value. This particular lens mounted on this camera is a lens that moves in order to focus. If I had a fixed lens and moved my camera back in order to focus, my lens would be stationary. In this case, my lens moves in order to focus, so I'm going to check the box, lens moves. Now I need to put something into this box here, which is called lens factor. If I had a perfect lens, it would be infinitely thin plane, and the two focal points would be 100 millimeters apart for a 50 millimeter lens. The lens we're using is, in fact, a lump of glass, metal, and plastic, and it is possible that the focal points are more than or less than 100 millimeters apart. This difference or fatness of a real world lens is called lens factor. We don't know what the lens factor of this lens is, and Ari or Zeiss, who manufactured the lens, probably wouldn't tell us. The calculation is done as part of this function. But in order to do the calculation, we have to put a value in to work with. So I'm going to put 10 centimeters into here, or 0 0.1 meters. So my lens factor, I have guessed at 10 centimeters. I can now go to open this box called Calibrate Focus. In this Calibrate Focus box, I have three target distances and three focus positions. These are readings from the motor, which is in mesh with the gears on the lens. These are the target distances as marked on the marks on the lens. In order to get the first target distance, I have to be at infinity. And in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off my focus axis so I can back drive the motor and I'm now going to put the lens on infinity by physically moving the lens. I 
I have now put the lens on infinity, but the focus axis doesn't read zero, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to directly zero the lens at infinity. This gives me the end of my travel and the zero reference or home position for my focus axis. Because that is effectively infinity, there's no numbers there. My focus position for this, read from the motor, is left click, right click, store, zero. I'm now going to go to a point halfway along the travel of the motor. The lens turns around and is a logarithmic scale, but I'm going to go halfway around the travel of the motor in order to find a mid position for my curve. I have gone to four feet, which on this lens is halfway around my travel. Four feet corresponds to 122 centimeters. On this scale only, we are measuring the distance in centimeters. I'm at four feet. I have entered that in my target distance. Just here I now go left click, right click, store. And I have a value there that is halfway around my travel based upon the present lens scaling. It's notable that that is a positive number. I need that to be a positive number in order to be able to do the calculations. If that was a negative number, due probably to having the motor on the other side of the lens, I would need to click on reverse motor in order to make it a positive number. I'm now going to go to the close focus part on the lens. My close focus mark is two feet, which is 61 centimeters. So I can put 61 centimeters there and I can left click, right click, store there. And I now have three motor positions and three target distances. This is sufficient to define the curve of this lens. So I'm now going to use calculate and press it once. Now that I've done the calculation, the lens scaling has changed and the lens factor has been calculated for me. I can now apply this data. This uses it in the setups that I am doing. And it says here, lens factor has been changed and so has the focus axis scaling. These changes have not been written to disk. Okay. So I can exit from this box. There is my lens factor. Because that has not been written to disk, I'm going to write it to disk by clicking on Save. And I'm going to use it today by clicking on Apply. Now I can look at my real focus axis. And I can right click there and go into my focus axis scaling. This is the real focus axis that I am setting up that drives that motor on that lens. I have a minimum limit set at zero because when my lens is on infinity, focus is closest to the film plane, which is, makes it a minimum limit. So therefore my minimum limit is zero. I can now take my lens to my maximum limit, which may be closer than the last mark on the lens. I'm going to look at the lens and see if that's the case. I found I actually have some extra travel on the lens that allows me to go closer than the two feet marked on it. So 
So I now have a maximum limit. This will stop me driving the motor past the end stops of the lens. I left click, right click, store. I now have a point there that is my maximum limit. I have a minimum limit, a maximum limit. I have an internal scale. And I have an axis velocity and an axis acceleration. These values are arbitrarily chosen in order to allow me to move my lens. If I had a very stiff or sticky lens, I might need to reduce these. But this value shows that I believe I can go from one end of the lens to the other with this motor in 0.6 of a second, which is a reasonable figure for a bolt. So with these changes having been done, I'm going to save, apply that lens. That lens setup motor position wise is now done. In order to be able to come back and use that motor position setup again, I need to store that real information as a library file within this lens. So I'm just going to put my cursor on this button and right click only which tells me that my current focus axis configuration has been read into my lens setup. Okay. Now, within here, I have a correct focus axis. So I can now check customize focus. Now, when I save apply this lens, that focus axis will be written over that focus axis. Let's check to see that our scaling has worked. I'm in a position with my bolt. I'm going to left click, right click, and store the position of that axis. And I'm going to use my focus axis in a focus follows target mode and enable the focus axis. So the focus axis motor is now powered and I can put in target distances. If I put 153 there and go to position 1 through the go to, my lens is pulling focus to a position 153 centimeters, which corresponds to 5 feet. So that is correct. I can now put other distances in here. I can put 92 in there and go to position 1. And find it's slightly under 3 feet, which is correct. If there are significant errors in positions between the two, the three points that I've put in, then that either means we've done it incorrectly, or it means that the lens isn't actually a 50 millimeter lens, but is a 51 or a 49 or something in between. This has been a Mark Roberts motion control training video. Thank you for watching.